Hi, this is Jane Scarf. I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and I want to speak to you today about the Canadian Bill of Rights 1960 versus the <clears throat> Charter of Rights and Freedoms 1982. And specifically, I want to discuss those two pieces of legislation with regard to your right to protest. Primarily, uh, your, pro your right to protest includes freedom of speech or expression, uh, freedom of association, freedom of assembly, and freedom of the press. And both of these documents contain uh, a statement uh, of recognition of these rights. However, there is a significant difference between the way the Charter uh, deals with your rights and the way the Bill of Rights deals with your rights. The Charter has uh, a section um, right at the outset, Section 1, that allows the government to override your rights if they think there's an important enough reason. And the problem with that is you have to bring that before a judge if you believe that they didn't have an important enough reason. So that's very time consuming and expensive and uh, it's, it's not a good thing to have, have uh, hanging over. So section one says, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees the rights and freedoms set out in it subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. Okay, the <clears throat> Bill of Rights, on the other hand, says something quite contrary to that. It states that unless there is a federal act of parliament, the government, the federal government, cannot override your rights. So in section one of the Bill of Rights, that's where you have um, under section 1, D, E, and F, that's where you have your uh, freedom to protest, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and association, and freedom of the press. And in section 2, it says, every law of Canada shall, unless it is expressly declared by an act of Parliament of Canada, that it shall operate notwithstanding the Canadian Bill of Rights, be so construed and applied as not to abrogate abridge or infringe or to authorize the abrogation, uh, abridgment or infringement of any of the rights or freedoms herein recognized and declared and in particular uh, no law of Canada shall be construed or applied as to override you know, your legal rights and, and your, your fundamental rights. Your rights of protest is part of your fundamental rights. So uh, I, sh I should uh, um, specify that uh, the reason um, why this is this issue and this comparison and discussion is important for protest is because uh, police are often used to uh, limit or, or reduce or stop even uh, a protest. Now, the police are obligated to follow the Bill of Rights and the Charter, but then Section 1 is an issue. But the Bill of Rights, there's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts, or maybes. If there's no federal act of parliament, they're not supposed to override your rights. Now, all police are not federal, but all police are regulated by the federal government. So they're all uh, uh, obligated to follow the Bill of Rights at all times. So uh, I, I would like everybody to read that document and compare, read the charter too, and compare and, uh, and keep that in mind as we move forward when we're trying to maintain our rights. We don't wanna just go into the, the loosey goosey uh, charter where they can override them and you, know, you have to have a big debate as to whether they had a good enough reason to or not. And 
there's a, another just sort of a sidebar there's another problem with the charter too which is relevant to what's going on today which is communism like we're this is what's going down this is you know this is why we're having such a struggle with our rights um and the charter doesn't have the right to own land so that's that's uh that's a very big deficit of that piece of legislation as well now it, it is uh better in one sense it obligates the provincial government also at all times so um if it didn't have section one and it you know it did it, it was for the federal government and for provincial government to, to not ever violate your rights we'd be good we'd be doing good but not so now the provincial government with regard to bylaw that's a different story because bylaw is is provincial provincially regulated and uh oftentimes municipally uh, um, administered so the the bill of rights does not apply to them however uh, there are some serious problems with the um, COVID measures, lockdowns, masks, all that. Uh, there's there's ways and means to to um, challenge those laws constitutionally, and uh, using Section Seven, life, liberty, and security of person, that's a, a really strong challenge because it obviously violates those rights. But then you have the big second second round of of argument, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, they're going to want to argue that there was a good enough reason to override your rights. And the so, same with your right to protest. There, that's that, that same uh, ongoing uh, or potentially um, it, it, troublesome decision coming from the court. But there is one way that they can be challenged. That's a lot stronger. And that would be with Section 9127 of the Constitution, which um, makes it a federal responsibility to control the spread of communicable disease. And uh, you can even see that responsibility um, articulated through the Quarantine Act. So the, um, the Reopening of Ontario Act and the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act, provincial, are out of scope and therefore unconstitutional. And it's pretty clear case law and uh, interpretation of the Constitution, all that that's already taken place, that that um, assures that that kind of outcome. Uh, it, no, one hundred percent. The courts don't always behave themselves, but if they are behaving themselves, um, um, that would be a very uh, easy win. So this is what we're looking at in trying to uh, maintain our right to protest.